Hi, it's Chris from Chris Loves Crochet and Crochet Recreations, and I wanted to show you the um, the freeform capelet shawl that I did. Now, uh, I decided to go monochrome with it, and I'm going to use the other pieces for a bag. So this is how the one side looks um, with some different pieces of gray in it, and with the um, the huga as the uh, as the border. And so let me show you how I did it. Hey again. So this is my la my hopefully my last um, creative idea about the uh, freeform shawl capelet. And um, what I've decided to do is um, to go monochrome, basically. And what I did that kind of got me to that point was I decided to have some fuzz, but not that not a colorful fuzz. I went with this um, red heart huga. H Y G G E, um, Red Heart Huga, is how it's pronounced. Um, and I will put a, a a link down in the description on on how to get this. But this is uh, what color is this? Sterling to go along with the gray. And what I knew that I wanted to do was to have a um, an outline, a border um, with this with something soft and something a little bit uh, fuzzy. And so this is a little bit fuzzy. It's not quite like an eyelash. What it is is a is is a um, it looks like about a four ply that has some eyelashy kind of spokes coming out of it. And it is so soft. This is like my all time favorite yarn right now. And trying to find ways of using it. So I what I did on this after I made the the capelet, which I'll put up here with a um, uh, a link to how to make the how to make the capelet itself um, any way you want to do it. It's it's not it's not that difficult. It's just a, a um, what do they call it a fillet in, in a way that it's just a an um, a template to work on. But instead of filling it all up with all the different colors and such with with free form, you can go any way you want. And I decided to go the way of monochrome. And I think that it'll look really cool that way. So I just made some shells along the outside um, and then just single crochet um, all along the, uh, the, the sides that come up and then around, around the neck and down the other side. And so that gave me a nice border of this little bit darker, the sterling color on this gray. And what I did then was use my favorite crochet book. I don't know, it was one of my favorites. Right now it's my favorite. Uh, because it has a lot of different options in it, it as far as just making little pieces to add to your freeform. Freeform doesn't mean that every single thing has to be um, completely improv and, and just from your head. Um, you can use little pieces and then use it in your own freeform way. So this is a complete photo guide to crochet by Hubert and um, I'll put a link to this also below so you can look at this. There's also a second edition that varies slightly from this. It has most of the same. You, sh you would be good with, with one or the other. Um, so I went in and found some different shapes that I liked. So I made I made a heart from that, all in gray, with a really long tail in order to sew it on. And then I made this a star, so far just one, a star with a really long tail to sew it on. And then I made a few leaves, um, a couple of these. There's the other one. A couple of these with long tails to sew them on. A couple of these leaves. They kind of look like hearts to me. I like them. And a couple of these smaller ones with long tails. And then I made a, um, what do they call it? A lazy J. A couple of these. 
with really long tails to sew them on. You see what I'm getting at? So we did that. Oh, you can't see that. This is a paid for book. You can't see all that. And then what, uh, what I did was close that up and then started on a freeform piece, a scrumble. Um, with some bullion stitches and some oh what are we calling these it's not a puff stitch it's a uh, I'll get to it in a second my brain's a little a little fried so I I made this and I think these are gonna go into the into the corners and then all along the, the the edges here will be some little flowers um, I'm not going to put a whole lot along the top of the back. Uh, a lot of people have hair. I don't have a lot of hair, but a lot of people have hair that just covers that up anyway. And so I'll have a few pieces down along the along the edge here. Down along the edge to give it a little bit of weight, a little bit of sass, a little bit of swing. A little bit of swing. So I'm going to have some of these pieces over here and then the rest of them coming around the edge. And then maybe do some top stitch with with some more of this huga that kind of looks like eyelash unless I can find some eyelash in a gray or black or sterling to do some top stitches um, with that to make it kind of fancy. So what I wanted to do today was to show you um, show you this uh, free form because <coughs> the rest of it, you know, you you can find little uh, little samples of little um, instructional tutorials of, of pieces that you want to do or you can look for a book like this if you have a book like this just get little motifs little little something or others that you want to do so I'm going to show you how to work this and um, these these are cluster stitches that's what they are <laughs> they're double crochet cluster stitches so this is going one way with double crochet and then I flipped it over and did the cluster stitches and we know that with these double crochet cluster stitches they pop out to the back so that was perfect and then I um, did some bullion stitches around the top so that's what I have with this one so I'm going to make another one and I will show you how I do that okay so this one I started with 12 stitches in uh, or 12 uh, double crochets and so that's what I'm doing with this with this one so it'll be matchy matchy so in order to do that I um, I chained 14 and then did a double crochet in the uh, fourth chain and that was the second double crochet because the first three chains count as one double crochet and then what I do so that this is nice and complete on on the chain part is I work in the back loops and so I have a couple more double crochet to do in the back loops so that is 11 and the last one's a little hard to get into and that is 12 so I just started off with 12 well 11 double crochet and one chain three and now I'm going to go back I'm going to turn I'm going to chain three and turn and then in each stitch include including the very first one I'm gonna make a, um, a double crochet cluster of five so the first one I'm just gonna make four partial double crochets and then pull them together in a cluster because this first um, chain three so there's one two oops three Four. Oops, that's what I wanted to do. Was four, and then I yarn over, and I pull through all five loops, and then I chain one to lock it. Then I go into the very next one, and this time I'm going to do five because it's not a beginning one. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Sorry, I didn't say that before. Leave that on the loop yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two yarn over go into the stitch pull up one yarn over pull through two and now other than the one that was on there I've got three I need two more 
one, two. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on the hook, and chain one. And you can see that they're popping out to the back side, which is fine because that's my front side. Right now I'm on the wrong side, and so I want it to pop out to the right side. And it'll get a little crowded, but that's okay because this is how I am creating the arch or half circle or whatever you want to call it, is by crowding these in. One, two, three, four, five and causing that to bow out. All right, so I think I have one more in this uh, chain three. So let me count. I should have 12, and I think what I have right now is 11. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, yeah. So um, on the top of the, of the chain three, just find a good place to, find a good place to work. get under two strands and um, what am I doing I'm looking at that get under two strands so that you're not creating a giant hole but because under one or under all three you're going to create a giant hole so try to get under two strands to give yourself a little bit of support so there I've got my two so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all of them, and then chain one. And so now, like I said, it got very crowded and it created this arch. Now I'm going to chain three to give myself height and I'm also going to start and end, well let's say I already chained one so I'm going to chain two more. I'm going to start and end with a double crochet. So that chain three serves as giving me height for my um, bullion stitches and it also serves as the ending uh, double crochet. So um, I'm going to now kind of draw up a loop and use my latch hook. Now I should have mentioned before, sorry, this is um, four weight, not very nicely wound, so it splits very easily. Uh, cotton bamboo, I believe is what I have. Cotton bamboo and then, like I said, the huga. Uh, for the for the outline of the of the shawl so um, and a size four a G a four millimeter I should say size G four millimeter uh, crochet hook now I'm going to put that aside and do um, some bullion stitches now these bullion stitches are more narrow than the cluster stitches and so I'm going I'm going to need to for sure add in a couple I added in two increases in here so um, if you're doing the 12 like like I am you can figure out where the, where they need to go for you um, it looks like I did one two three four five and then I did two in this one space and then one two three four and then did two in this space one two three four five and then did two in this space so however however it it calls to you and I'm doing my bullion stitches with um, with 10 rounds 10 loops so that's totally up to you the stitches are going to go into the single the single ones if, if I don't do a an increase are going to go into so I'm looking at the back of these puff stitches which is really the front 
uh, the puff stitch stitch is right here and then the space between so I'm gonna do two in each one between each one so I do one in the puff stitch stitch and one between the puff stitches then when I do an increase I'm gonna put two puff stitches I'm calling them puff stitches they're not they're clusters in the cluster stitch stitch I'm gonna put two in there because it's larger than the uh, area between the two clusters so when I get to it I'm gonna put two cluster stitches here and then one here and that'll be my increase of the bullion stitches so and I'm doing a 10 wrap one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and the number of wraps um, indicate or will dictate um, how tall your bullion stitches are which will also have an effect on how many times you need to um, increase so I'm going into this first um, cluster stitch stitch and the tens are kind of tough to stretch and get your uh, your hook through so make sure that your latch hook goes all the way through with all of your um, looped on back here on the back side so it's open and then you latch in your yarn pull it back through the stitch leave that inside your latch your latch is closed now and so it's nice and safe to just push all of these wraps in my case 10 wraps over with your nail or your finger or whatever you're gonna have to push them though and then pull it through so you leave a leave some good um, lax tension when you're pulling it through once you've got it up there you want to pull it snug a little bit grab your yarn close it so I, I did you notice that I pushed my latch hook through so that it would open so now it closes and it pulls through that loop and it gives me my chain one I'm going to wind 10 more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure it's behind the latch. And hang on to it. Go between the two cluster stitches. Push that latch hook open to the other side. All of your wraps are still on these on the front side. You've got your latch open make sure that your yarn goes in there and then it closes oops onto your yarn pull it back through stitch and now push all of your other yarn around that stitch this is very lax now because i want it to be able to pull up easily through all of these and there it is now I can pull it down a little bit snug it down yarn over get that into the latch and then pull it through and that gives you your chain one so those are my two in between these two cluster stitches those are my two bullion stitches so I'm going to do two more here one in the cluster stitch stitch and then one in the space between It does take longer than a normal stitch but I find with the latch hook you don't mess up as much you don't have to redo as many and it actually moves and you know you're not gonna get it stuck you're not gonna get your loop stuck on your hook as you're trying to pull through that one piece of yarn because here we've got that one piece of yarn secured inside the latch hook.
I have another tutorial out there on using the latch hook for easy bullion stitches because I love the bullion stitch and I love using this latch hook for it. I think it was the greatest thing and I will, oh, I can't remember her name right now again. Um, I'll find out who it is that I learned it from and, um, and put a little, a little shout out in the description or a link to hers or something. So that's one, two, three, four. Now I had said before on my previous one that I made an increase at this point. So in the actual cluster stitch, stitch, I'm going to make two of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I do make the loops tight and you're able to make them tight on a on a latch hook. If you're on a regular crochet hook, you have to keep them kind of loose so that you can finagle your hook back through. But you can keep them nice and tight on a on a latch hook. So here I'm going to go back into that same stitch to do my increase. Make that latch kick back, go through, grab my yarn, latch hook latches onto it, pull it back through, and then loosen my tension on my working yarn, pull these tight loops over it, pull it up, pull it back just a little bit, give it some sturdiness and yarn over chain one. So that was the increase. I got, I've got two in that stitch, so now I still need to put the one in between the two clusters. So keeping the tension loose, pulling these tight loops over the, and I pull it down a little bit, tighten it, and chain one. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these because they are slow going, even with a latch hook, but I think they're much faster than, than with a uh, crochet hook. I wouldn't do them this way. So I'll finish up here and I'll show you just what it looks like at the end with my um, double crochet here. And so with the 12, I ended up with three increases, so there should be 15 on this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I, not, I did not count that right. There's two per 12. Oh my gosh. Here goes my math. So there's 12 of these, so I do 24 plus three increases. So that's 24, 25, 26, 27. Let's see if that's right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Because at the end, I did a double crochet instead of another bullion stitch. So there are three increases in here. And on the last stitch, I did a double crochet. So I have 26 bullion stitches and then a double crochet to finish that arch. All right, well, let me finish this and come back. All right, so I am now at the last cluster stitch. So I am going to put um, one bullion into the cluster stitch, actual stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Into that last stitch there, pull that latch back, latch in yarn, leave my tension loose, push these tight loops over the latch, pull it up, oops, I just did that. I saved it. Okay, so pull it up, pull it back down just a tad to tighten it up. 
give it a chain one. <coughs> Sorry, my sweater was over my microphone. I hope you heard that. Um, give it a chain one. So now I'm going to get my uh, crochet hook again. And so that was my last one. That was my 26th. Uh, bullion stitch and now on top of this chain three I'm going to put a double crochet if I can get into that little knot there go under two leave one pull it through this is the splittiest yarn but I love it and then do a double crochet. So now we have two little arches that I'm going to put in the corners, I think, of the of the shawl. So I'm going to make some other little pieces and then come back and show you. So this is what I do as far as, as cutting enough. Um, I make my little loop, pull it out, and then I kind of trace around with my yarn how much yarn it would take to go around once be generous and then I double it with a little bit extra and uh, there's always then extra I would much rather have too much than not enough in order to sew these things down so anyway so there are my two little arches with the double crochet with the cluster the double crochet of uh, five together clusters and then the uh, bullion stitch and I did it with 12 and then with 12 clusters and then with 24 25 26 bullion with a chain three at the beginning and a double crochet at the end that's how I did it you can do it any way you want this is a scramble so be creative do anything you want so I'll be back to show you what I put on my um, shawl. All right, so I went ahead and sewed in uh, the pieces and I'll show you one side since um, my camera space is so small. And uh, you can see the border and you can see, um, this is the one that I showed you with the, uh, with the bullion stitches and the cluster stitches. Um, I put that down in the, in the rounded corner on the front. And um, this is the neckline here. And so, or I'll give you a little bit more close up. There's that uh, J, what is that? The lazy J. And here's a leaf that looks like a heart. And here's a leaf that looks like a leaf. And here's a star. And, um, and here's that other freeform piece. Now, um, to put it on, even these few pieces um, has given it quite some weight, which is great because it's going to keep it keep it heavier in the in the front and keep it from falling back you guys know what I mean um, uh, along your along your neck so uh, so this is nice and um, so with the two sides it'll be very subtle um, which is not where I started which is the great thing about freeform is that you can continue to change your mind and to evolve your idea throughout and um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you will try something like this with all the colors or monochrome or however you want to do it and post it on the Facebook page. I've, I've got um, a link to that down below and uh, just and post a picture of it. I would love to see some more freeform and um, some other ideas and what you did with it. So uh, thank you for your time. I hope that you enjoyed it. And remember, we all have a choice. So uh, please choose happy. Thanks. Bye.